Hi, Jeffrey from the Whole Food Plant-Based Cooking Show. As part of our creative series today, I'm going to show you how I made this 10-foot Buddha mural and this 10-foot Jimi Hendrix mural using common household chalk. About a year ago, I started working with Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards to pick up on a childhood interest in drawing and art. The book is structured as a course where you do a series of drawing exercises to learn each technique. So I dug in and put up a lot of drawings for the next few months. I found pretty quickly I like creating portraits, and the more I did, the larger I wanted to make them. This led me to the idea of creating portrait murals on the walls here in the house. So let's dig into the details on how to create a chalk mural. Chalk murals are a great medium because they offer a huge canvas and the supplies are cheap. A simple sanding block to prep the surface, a 29 ounce can of tintable chalkboard paint, which allowed us to choose the wall color, a trusty tape measure for setting up the grid, a chalk line reel for making the grid. The reel came with blue chalk and it has chemicals and oils that make it hard to get off the wall. So I just ground up my used chalk pieces and put the chalk dust in the reel to get clear lines that were easy to erase. And then a simple box of non-toxic white chalk. This mural actually took about two boxes of chalk. So let's take this humble piece of chalk and make some art. I actually started by trying to make chalkboard paint, just to really do this on the cheap, but the paint went on unevenly and left a bumpy surface, so I ended up sanding down the wall with a sanding block and buying a small can of real chalkboard paint as money well spent. With one nice coat of actual chalkboard paint, the wall was smooth and ready to go. I marked out one foot notches around the edges of the wall and then snapped my chalk grid on the wall, which is great because it was easy to erase the grid as I worked, leaving no trace in the final mural. To create the source art, I start by taking a picture of the wall with my phone and loading it into my image editing software. I recreate the grid using a line tool to make the grid clearer in the image since I will be putting this on an iPad to work from. I create a mask area of the surface of the wall and then load my source image into the mask so I can move it around and find the right placement. Since I am working in chalk, I set the image to black and white to make the shading easier to see. I came across this image of the hill of the Buddha statue in Japan I thought it was perfect for a large-scale mural. I did have a second image of this Buddha, but it didn't show the stairs at the bottom, so I decided to go with my first choice. With the image ready, I export it to my iPad to work from as a reference, and we're ready to go. Just a quick tip on technique. I figured out pretty quickly that chalk works best by using the round pieces in different lengths and thinking of them as different brush sizes for shading and covering large areas. Then I take the worn down pieces that have been sharpened to a point and use them for highlighting and fine detail drawing. I found this microfiber cloth worked great as an eraser. I started working in sessions and knocked out a chunk of the work every day, a couple hours at a time. Once I got the Buddha in place, I took a picture of the wall again and went back into my image editing software to find a good background of mountains. I added one side of the mountains, the lotus pedestal, and the stairs in over a couple more sessions, but decided I wanted a waterfall in a piece. So I found an image of a waterfall that fit with the mountains, and then pasted in an image of a river over and over a few times to flesh out the left side. The image doesn't need to be exact, since it's just a reference for placement. It took one more session to get the waterfall and river in place, and then I had to decide what I wanted to do with the sky. I found a high-res image of the moon and mixed it in with some images of moonlit clouds and some more mountains and set up my final reference image. So here's the final mural that sits on the wall where I do my yoga and meditation practice every morning. Through trial and error, I found I could get a good range of light, shadow, and texture and create the illusion of depth to the mountains in the background. It is worth noting one seeming downside to a chalk mural is how fragile the final piece is. You can see here a couple of accidental scuffs with a yoga ball is all it takes to leave a mark. But I actually like the impermanence of it. I figure it fits right in with what the Buddha represents. The Hendrix mural was actually the first mural I created, but I did it in one crazed all-night session that ran to about 4.30 a.m., so I didn't have as many pictures to use to explain the steps like I did for the Buddha mural. 
I already had the chalk wall painted in my studio, so I just erased what was there and set up a simple grid using a yardstick I had on hand. Setting up the source art was the same process where I take a picture of the wall with my phone and drop it into my image editing software. I create a mask of the painted area and then drop in my source image and shift it around to find the right placement. This image has always been a favorite of mine since I had it tattooed on my arm some 27 years ago. I adjust the opacity of the layers so I can see the grid from the wall and then the image is ready to go. One thing I've learned diving into making art over this last year is that for most artists, every piece hits a point in the process they call the ugly stage. It can come at different stages, but for this piece, it was in trying to get the placement right and before starting to work on the details. It can be discouraging. I have hit this point countless times now and thought I would just throw a piece away and start over, but after sticking with it, I ended up creating something I was really happy with. I almost erased this entire project at this point, but I'm glad I stuck with it because it led me to realize I love creating murals. So here is the final Hendrix mural. It sits on the wall in our studio where we work on all kinds of creative projects, including our music and this cooking show. I mounted some guitar hooks for a bass in my guitar and find the mural inspiring when I look over and see Jimmy filling up this entire side of the room. One final interesting note, the morning after I stayed up all night creating this mural, I came into my office to have a fresh look and found this scene. I have a thin sheet of prism window stickers that throw off these amazing rainbows in my studio when the sun hits them. I saw this and figured the mural must have Jimmy's blessing. <laughs>